Marijuana stocks have gotten hammered over the last year, but now that the market high has worn off, is it time to get back in for those long-term returns? In this video, we'll look at why cannabis stocks have fallen and when the market could light up again. Then I'll reveal my five favorite weed stocks to buy right now. We're talking best marijuana stocks today on Let's Talk Money. Beat that. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph O with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. We're doing our first Ask the Bowtie Nation video and I'm excited about sharing some of the conversation we got on marijuana stocks. The idea started with a video comment by Kabim Sam wanting to know my thoughts on cannabis stocks. Kabim had been following stocks like Canopy Growth and Aurora, but wasn't sure whether to invest because the group was just getting hammered, slammed lately. And honestly, I've been planning on doing a video, but I haven't looked into the industry as much, so I shared the question in our private Facebook group, Let's Talk Money Together. We just started the group up to get that back and forth conversation going within the community. We've already got some great input. If you're not already a member, I'll leave a link to it in the description below or just go to Facebook and look for the Let's Talk Money Together group. So thank you Kabeem for the question and what I want to do is look at some of the responses we got in the Facebook group. Then I'll share my own analysis and reveal the five cannabis stocks that I'm following right now. I also want to get your feedback. What do you think about marijuana stocks? Is it just another bubble or a long-term investment? So scroll down and tell us what you think in the comments below and which stocks you're following. I was actually really surprised at the comments we got in the Facebook group. In the past, I've seen almost nothing but bullish sentiment in cannabis stocks, but that all seems to be turning right now. Richard and Frank both feel it's a bubble here and think there won't be much more than a buzz until federal legalization comes along. GE and Gabrielle both brought up the pricing problem with legal marijuana versus the black market, and this seems to be a big factor right now. A nationwide survey put the average cost of an ounce of high quality marijuana at $350 on the black market. Now that ranges quite a bit from a low of $200 an ounce on the west coast to as high as $400 an ounce in parts of the midwest, but averages somewhere in between. Now because of the taxes and regulatory costs though, medical marijuana sells for between $280 to $425 an ounce, while legal recreational marijuana from a shop can easily go to $500 an ounce or more. So because of those taxes plus the other expenses, retailers and medical dispensaries are having a real tough time competing with your street corner pharmacists. In fact, according to BDS Analytics, a year after recreational marijuana became legal in Massachusetts, over three quarters or 77% of the consumption is still being bought on the streets. So where does that leave the cannabis industry and how can you find the stocks to buy? Now, nine states and Washington DC have legalized recreational marijuana while 29 states have legalized medical weed. The conventional wisdom is that when recreational marijuana is legalized at the federal level, so across the nation, that's going to open up more financing and sales for these companies. The US House of Representatives passed the SAFE Act last September to clarify those federal rules on banking for cannabis companies. You see, a lot of the retailers and even the larger companies have been squeezed for funding because traditional banks, they just won't lend to these companies. So that legislation is seen as a big step, but it's pretty much dead on arrival in the Senate during an election year. Even in these states where the recreational use is legal though, you see those pricing problems and I'm not sure it's just going to be a matter of more states legalizing or even changing those federal laws. Now I want to show you what I'm looking at in the financials here and we'll use this canopy growth ticker CGC as an example. So you see the company has had some really impressive sales growth. Revenue grew 187% from 2018 through 2019 and that last four quarters are up over 65% compared to that 2019 period. Like most startups though, the operating side of the income statement is just horrible. Staff costs alone eat up almost all the revenue and just the course selling general and administrative, that core part of running the business, that was 840 million Canadian dollars versus revenue of just 380 million. What you want to look at in these early stage companies is that change in costs and revenue though. If a company is moving in the right direction, it'll be able to keep up that fast sales growth and not grow expenses quite as fast. So eventually, if it keeps up that pace, it's going to become profitable. But with the marijuana stocks, it seems costs are rising just as fast as revenue in some cases. For example, Canopy reported operating costs of 640 million Canadian dollars in 2019, which was an increase of 326% from the year before, 
on just 187% sales growth. Now sales have grown 65% in the last four quarters versus that 2019 period and operating expenses only increased 47%. So we're on the right track here, but it's still years away from when we're gonna see profits from this company. The problem here is that all those taxes and regulatory costs really eat into sales and drive up the price the company has to charge for its product. But the price is already limited by the black market that's selling cheaper. So the cannabis companies are between just a rock and a hard place without the scale to grow and lower those costs. This is still very much a what if investment. What if the federal law is changed and those companies can expand nationwide? That would allow the leaders to add that scale, that size they need to realize those cost savings and become profitable. Without those scale advantages though, you're just not gonna see the profitability. So if you're investing in cannabis stocks, it's gonna be either a long-term investment or just a quick trade to profit from the headlines. Now let's look at those five favorite cannabis stocks and I wanna start here with a fund, not because I think it's a buy, but because I know a lot of you are gonna be asking about it. The ETFMG Alternative Harvest ETF, it's ticker MJ obviously, started trading in 2015 but has seen the same weakness as the rest of the market and is down over 60% in the last year. While I usually love ETFs for that instant diversification and ease of investing, I don't feel like this one is your best bet on the theme. The fund charges a 0.75% expense ratio, which is extremely high for an ETF. Also though, since the industry is pretty small, the fund only holds 37 stocks, so it's not like you can't just replicate this on your own with maybe 10 or 15 of those marijuana stocks. But even if you're looking to de-risk your cannabis portfolio with multiple companies, I'd look to maybe five or 10 at the most. We've already seen how the business environment is really tough for this industry and you really want to be picky so you don't get stuck with all the duds out there. Our first pick here is Afria, ticker APHA, and this one is my undiscovered pick. The bigger companies like Canopy and Aurora get all the attention, but I think Afria could be one to put on your radar. The company has a strong international presence, especially in Europe with its German Pharma subsidiary. It's also got one of the strongest balance sheets I've seen with over half a billion dollars in cash. That's half the market cap alone and no real long-term debt other than some convertibles. You know, that's gonna give it a lot of financial flexibility for financing and to survive until the next wave of investor interest comes around. While most cannabis companies haven't really done much with branding, Afria has a pretty strong start with its Broken Coast product, and I think that's gonna be really important when consumers start getting brand conscious. We've got six analysts here with price targets from $5.27 a share up to $8.28 per share over the next year. Next, we've got one of the larger companies in the space, Canopy Growth, ticker CGC, and I tend to prefer these larger players because they're the ones most likely to survive as that industry develops. You know, companies like Canopy and Aurora are gonna be around to benefit from that long-term story, and they're building the size for those cost efficiencies. Despite its size though, looking at Canopy's earnings is no less painful than any other in the space. Management delivered a solid third quarter beat, but profits are still expected to be negative for the foreseeable future. Now, Canopy isn't as global as I'd like to see, especially for its size. The company books more than 80% of its sales from Canada with some marginal medical marijuana sales outside the country. What it does have going for it though, and this is the biggest point I see for Canopy, is a $37 billion liquor giant Constellation Brands owns 37% of the company. That is a huge vote of confidence for Canopy, deep pockets for funding, and probably makes the company a takeover target by Constellation when some of that volatility comes out of cannabis. Canopy also closed a deal last year to buy U.S. Acreage, a U.S. company upon federal legalization, which could be years away, but it does give it that runway for growth when this all happens. Canopy is fairly well covered with 13 analysts here and price targets from $3.20 a share up to $36 each, though most are clustered right around that $20 to $25 point. Kronos Group, ticker CRON, is a smaller company at just $2 billion market cap, but another one with a deep pockets investor. $79 billion Altria Group invested $1.8 billion in the company in 2018 for a 45% share and an option to pick up another 10% in the future. Now these big stakes always catch my attention because anything close to that 50% ownership is almost always a bid to make an easy acquisition down the road. Kronos hasn't expanded as much into cultivation. Instead, it's chosen to develop its value-added processing, and I think this makes it a takeover target as well. As the industry expands, companies are gonna start looking to consolidate for that vertical integration where, where each player has its entire supply chain from cultivation to consumer. That means companies like Kronos with an advantage in one specific piece of the puzzle are just gonna be easy picking for merging into larger companies. Kronos also looks like it has the jump on the industry in terms of an international strategy with joint ventures in Europe, Latin America, and Australia. 
It's setting up local cultivation and distribution in these regions, and it's soon gonna have a fairly strong global presence. Four analysts here with price targets $9.03 up to $12.80 per share over the next year. Constellation Brands, ticker STZ, is my pick for a marijuana stock that's not a weed company. Constellation's 37% ownership of Canopy Growth gives the stock that option-like upside if marijuana stocks take off again, but you also get that certainty in the largest alcohol supplier in the United States. The company was able to take advantage of AB InBev's antitrust problems to lock in a perpetual ownership of its Mexican beer brands in the United States, great brands like Corona and Modelo. It's in the process of divesting some of those lower margin wine brands this year, and I think we're gonna see a much more profitable company going into next year. I was actually a little surprised looking at the valuation on this one because it did underperform the market last year, and shares have been weighed down by those wine assets and the investment in Canopy. Shares trade for 22 times earnings, which are expected to be flat over the next year, but management has a good track record for beating those expectations. So maybe a little expensive, but no more than the rest of the market, and analysts have price targets up to $266 per share over the next year. Overall, a good marijuana bet, plus the stable cash flow from that core part of the business. Another weed stock pick here without those industry risks is Innovative Industrial Properties, ticker IIPR. Now, IIPR is a real estate investment trust with 46 properties in 14 states. Basically, it's buying up land used in growing marijuana in the US, then leasing it back to the growers. I really like this strategy because even as the distributors or the other companies in the supply chain face those pricing and regulatory challenges, we're still seeing demand for cultivation and we'll keep seeing it as legalization increases. Now the dividend yield for IAPR has fallen to 3.9% because the share price has jumped 23% in the last year, but this is one of the few stable growth stories in the industry. If you're looking for those dividends, check out my 10 favorite dividend stocks for 2020. 10 companies with yields as high as 10% and great upside potential. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.